Algoma Equinox is uh, Canada's uh, largest, uh, newest, fastest uh, ship. It's the first of a, a series of eight ships that Algoma is building, and actually the entire Great Lakes uh, fleet is being renewed uh, with uh, various companies. There's at least three Canadian companies that are building uh, new ships. And in, within the fleet, we've also got a lot of uh, people that are retiring. So in the next, I'll say within the next 10 years, but actually within the next five years, we've got a lot of people. I can, I can look around this ship and see that there's probably at least three people, if not four people, that will retire in the next five years. And that's out of a crew of uh, 18. So we've, we've got a very high amount of people that will be retiring in the next uh, few years. Uh, it's a brand new engine, probably the most advanced engine, two-stroke engine in the world now with uh, a, a good fuel efficiency and a low smoke emission. Plus here we have the uh, exhaust scrubber to remove the sulfur from the heavy fuel we burn on those engines. Well, it's modern technology for the engine room wheelhouse and stuff. But it's basically the same on deck for us as, a, as an older ship. Well, it's, uh, it, for me, how the Equinox is different is that it's a lot more fun. The technology is a lot more up to date, so you get to work with the latest gadgets and baubles and also apply you know, all the things you learned in school and then how the newest technologies make them easier and also more interesting to, uh, to work with. Um, the bridge is fully integrated, which allows us to have much more, uh, uh, a much more aware control of where we are in our surroundings. Uh, and as well, the, the cargo gear is, is, is new and uh, the ship just handles very efficiently, very nicely, and it's a lot of fun. Um, the Equinox is different from other ships. While well, it's brand new, the technology is a lot better. Um, I find the accommodations are a lot, uh, a lot more comfortable. It's quieter. It doesn't. Uh, most of the time, it doesn't shake as much. <laughs> What's the food like? Well, uh, the obvious answer is that, well, it depends on the cook. But we have some good cooks, and, uh, and, and, and they do a really good job, so, so it keeps us fed and, and happy. And of course, if we weren't, we'd let them know, and they'd try and you know, cater to our needs and cook what we like. Actually, on a Great Lakes ship, the, the way we, uh, we go, we, we're pretty much in cell range. I'm going to say 75% of the time we've got cell coverage, if, if not even better. So you're always within four or five hours of making a phone call. So we've got that on board the ship, we've got internet, so we've got email, uh, and you can communicate Facebook or whatever. You can communicate at home with the internet or through the, in fact, we've got wireless on board. So your actually cellular phone device can work on Wi-Fi. So it's quite good. So communications is, is, is pretty good. And uh, well, we even do some things like write letters every once in a while. Send mail home. <laughs> Sometimes you have to respond pretty fast because kind of safety and uh, uh, especially when you're maneuvering and you, let's say, uh, once we lose the steering, the, the holes blow out. Then we have another st emergency steering, but you have to know what to do really fast to be sure the ship not going to go aground somewhere. Then you have to know what you're doing at one moment. And same on the, like uh, under under high pressure, then you have to stay calm to be sure you don't make any mistake because mistake in that industry is it's a big money. I'm a AB, which is able-bodied seaman. It's a wheelsman, and I steer the ship. I get up. I uh, as soon as I get up, I make my coffee and shower and breakfast and come up to the house if we're on the run. They call it on the run. And if we're in port, I get up and go out and do my duties on deck. Uh, I start at 3.30 in the morning. I come up, I send a morning message so the office knows where we are at all times. And our ETAs to the next port, how long we're going to be in that port before we leave. I, uh, after that, more likely I'm either doing low plans or on low plans. Uh, daily work lists, managing the guys' times, what activities they do for the day. I'm 48 watchman, deck in. Uh, my job is to uh, clean and maintain the ship and uh, look after the cargo holes, tie up, let go from Marine Port, 
monitor the winches and anything else the first mate or the captain wants us to do. Typical day for me, I'll get up 3.30 in the morning, I get up, have coffee, first thing I do is do, do me floors and do soundings, make sure there's no water coming in tanks and do any other maintenance that needs to be redone. And then at early in the morning, call the watch and make sure everybody's up for the next watch. Uh, my typical day on board ship would involve uh, waking up in the morning uh, to be on watch at 8 o'clock. I keep the watch from 8 to 12 and then in the evening from 8 to 12 as well. It's uh, all about uh, navigation and, uh, and safety of navigation while I'm on watch. And when we're in port, I do the cargo watches, again, at the same hours. And it's all about unloading and loading the vessel as safely as possible and, uh, and as timely as possible and in as timely manner as possible, yeah. A typical day of work for me would involve uh, standing watch on the bridge, um, helping the officers navigate the ship. And I would also spend half of my day on deck um, doing general maintenance or um, helping with the cargo work or ballasting alongside the cruise officers. So on the ship typically, actually for example, we can say that uh, today's day started at, uh, at uh, midnight. We arrived uh, just after midnight, the ship tied up and uh, we unloaded our iron ore throughout the night. Uh, so we, we left Hamilton, came through, we're going to go through the Welland Canal. And the Welland Canal is a 25 mile long canal built with uh, actually eight locks and we, we use it to climb between Lake Ontario and Lake Erie to bypass Niagara Falls. So that's a good 350 foot drop. So we've, we basically climb the Niagara Escarpment to, to go between lakes. And from here to uh, Thunder Bay, it will be approximately, I'm gonna say about three days to get up to Thunder Bay where we're gonna go load uh, prairie wheat to bring down below. So in a typical day, we're gonna prepare our load plan for, uh, for the next ports. We're going to uh, uh, navigate the ship through the Great Lakes uh, and, and, and deal with various things that goes on in the ship. So our morning starts off with the cooks make the breakfast, the crew gets up and we go. The ship runs 24-7. So we've got uh, three watches that uh, rotate through the day. In my off time, I usually read. I'm an avid reader. I don't watch a lot of TV, but I read a lot. Uh, in my spare time on ship, uh, I like to relax, uh, read a book, or play some video games. Uh, also, we got a good rec room. We can play ping pong with each other. You know, uh, some guys like to like to play cards or chess or or watch TV. Even you can just relax and lounge out. That's a or you can just sit on the sit on the porch, like on the swings we got, and just uh, look outside and enjoy where we are. The social life on the ship, uh, it's a. Uh, it's a really uh, cozy atmosphere. I mean, it's the same guys that you're working with, guys and girls. The crew is only about, you know, 17 to 20 people. So you learn to live together, you get to know everyone's quirks, and, uh, and, you, and you make the most of it. You make good friendships, and you make friendships that'll last because you've been through so much together. I mean, social life's pretty good. Um, you gotta try to get along with everyone. Could be a challenge for some people, but um, it's basically like, um, after you've been on the ship for a while, it's almost like a, it's a family, it's its own social atmosphere, so you just basically try to get along with everybody and um, I find it pretty good, I, I don't have much of a problem. So. When I'm done uh, navigating the ship, there's usually an hour or two a day spent on uh, paperwork and, uh, and uh, payroll, uh, just planning ahead, we've got to plan ahead for the next cargoes and that that we do. And this is a new ship, so uh, the new ship we're dealing with uh, uh, just getting organized, We're getting the ship set up, getting the ship laid out, and getting ourselves uh, understanding all the technology that we have here. So it, it's uh, it's quite good. Our days are pretty full, but we've actually got a really good crew. It's almost it's almost like a small family that we have on board. Uh, I went back to school. That's a college in uh, Rimouski, Quebec. Uh, I went back to school at 30 years old. I finished at 34, now I'm 45, and uh, I love it. That, I, love, I love that job. <laughs> well, I've went to school for in Morrisburg in 81 for the Gina Lakes. That was a seven, nine week program. I've done a couple courses in Montreal for seamanship, and uh, a couple courses in, uh, or one course in Georgian Bay College 
for cargo maintenance. Uh, and in those three years I did uh, eight months of uh, classroom work followed by four months at sea. It was set up that way and uh, all in told it was a uh, one year at sea as a cadet coupled with the three years, uh, three full years of education. And when I came out, I came out with my watchkeeping mate's license, uh, ready to serve as an officer on board uh, merchant vessels. When I came out, uh, I wanted a career that would uh, take me outside, uh, outside the box really, outside the cubicle, outside the, the nine to five, and uh, take me places where I could see the country, uh, meet people from different places, and uh, really say that I've seen at least my country, if not the world, and that's what brought me to this career. And that's where I realized that, you know, working nine to five and coming home with only a few hours to spare to your free time before having to go through uh, the same grind the next day really was something that I was trying to avoid in my, uh, in my life for the future. And that's what brought me here. I've attended the uh, Marine Navigation Technology Program at NSCC for three years and I've just completed the program in April. Um, I just uh, wanted a new job, so um, a new experience somewhere where I was always learning. So I decided to get into the marine navigation program because there's a lot more opportunities and the money's a lot better and time off's a lot better. Uh, deckhand, to, uh, to be a deckhand on the ship, you'll go through the, the union. We've got the SIU and there's, there's various uh, agencies to go through. That can be looked up on the web. Uh, to, to be a deckhand, they'll usually take you for the first six months, you've, you're going to have to have a bit of training. I do believe you've got to have your grade 12 uh, to get into the Siemens International Union. And they'll do a criminal check. You, you've got to have a clean clean record uh, and a willingness to work and be away from home. And the deckhands, well, we, we, we help tie up the ship, load the cargo. Uh, pretty much uh, general labor on the ship is, is deckhand. It, it's, that's a good life too because you're, you're well paid and uh, you, you get uh, about six months off a year as well, so it's quite a good, uh, quite a good job. I had a best friend of mine there, he went sailing as a, in the engine room. His father was an engineer, so I talked to him and I wanted to get on the ships and that's when I started when I was 25. Here I am today. Well. We go up through the Thousand Islands and that, and it's in the St. Lawrence River, and it's a beautiful place. You pass right through the narrow river, and, and there's highlands on all sides of you, castles. And down around Quebec City, it's a beautiful place. And you get the chance to see all the, uh, some of the big cities in the Great Lakes, like Chicago, Milwaukee, Detroit. Mm, I like, what I like working with the ship is seeing different parts of the country. Um, you get to see from the St. Lawrence River, all the islands on the St. Lawrence River, all the way to Lake Superior and even some of the United States and Lake Michigan. Um, the other things I like about working on the ships is a career where you're always evolving and you're learning new things. You're, you never stop learning or being challenged. Yeah, that, that's the best part, I guess, well, shore leave. You get to see, uh, like, there's been times I've been, especially as a cadet, you've been in Quebec City for two days and the captain's given me two days off. Quebec City's beautiful and there's other towns that you get, you'd get you never see like uh, even a place like Thunder Bay is pretty good and I've been to Godrich and get to see parts of the country that you'd never see. That's, that's what I enjoy. Uh, if people are interested I definitely recommend they come and check out uh, the colleges, uh, Georgian College being one and uh, just to ask people who do have a career on the water what it's like and maybe if they can come and uh, get some idea of, uh, of what it's like to be on a ship. There's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of isolation involved because you're away, but there's also a lot of fun involved if you like traveling and, and being out and about. This, uh, you know, if you, like, if you like the idea of maybe a bit of adventure, the idea of going away from home, uh, it's this, this job you work basically six to eight months a year and you're home for between four and six months a year, depending on on your work contract and depending on what you get. Here you like your own boss. I have, I have the chief engineer, but when I'm on watch, now we're alone. And uh, you take your own decision and it's like a kind of freedom. I like it. My advice would be that the, the benefits are good, like as far as pay and time off, but it is, it, it is a different lifestyle. It's, uh, 
it's a lot of hard work to to get where um, you're an officer. It gets, I've been in school for three years, and the last three summers I've spent four months each summer on a ship. So it is it, it takes a lot of dedication, but if you work hard at it, you're you're going to come out with a very well-paying job and a job where you don't got to work all year. I like the challenges. Um, I like being challenged. Uh, everything's changing, so it's something different every day. You get to see nice things, meet nice people. I see it's a great job, but you have to you have to like it. Of course, it's not. If you need a lot of friends around you all the time, maybe it's not the job for you. But if you like something different, and uh, well, we're pretty well paid, and, and you have a longer vacation. Well, usually we work seven days a week, but when you're on vacation, well, you have one month, two months, and that's what's nice, and uh, you have no restriction on the money when you're on vacation. Uh, my career ambitions, well, I'd like to take it a step at a time, but uh, Definitely hoping to stay with uh, stay with Algoma and uh, and work in the fleet. Hopefully, become a captain one day, where I can really see if I can put my knowledge and my and the skills I've learned to good use, and really test myself. So that would be an interesting thing for me to do. Right now, my career ambition is just become a um, a third mate to board one of the ships, and then hopefully progress to a first mate and see where see where that takes me. Uh, I'm just going to take it one step at a time. Though. What I like about working on a ship, uh, again, what I like about it is that it takes me outside. It's a really intrepid career. If you like uh, traveling and seeing different places and working in a very uh, challenging environment, uh, both in terms of not just the work you're doing, but the conditions you're in while you're working. Again, we've got to cope with inclement weather, waves, sea and swell, storms, and again, deadlines and uh, commercial pressures as well to a certain extent. So if you like working in, a, in an atmosphere that, uh, that challenges you just based on where you are, you know, being away from home, being with a, a, a new set of people, depending on if it's a new ship or not, and just trying to form good work relationships and get the, and get the job done as a team, that's really rewarding. Mm -hmm.